happening everybody so we are at government wash which is like 25 minutes east of las vegas on lake mead the uh lake is all the way down there and it's a pretty cool spot but it's kind of busy there's a lot of uh, boaters out here so there's a lot of traffic and i think we're gonna take off and go back to stewart's point because it was very secluded and mellow we like the scenery a little bit better out here but it's definitely beautiful so we've got uh two goals today one is to do a little mini review of this place on the way out Two is to um, find a new camp spot, probably at Stewart's Point, and three is to install, or try to install, a new LED light bar that I got and do a little bit of a review on these LED headlights because uh, people have been asking about those and I want to satisfy my people. So we're gonna get on it. Okay, so all the spots we can find are like this, they're just pull-offs next to the road. So that means that you're gonna get a lot of dust. There's a lot of traffic coming in and out of here, so there's gonna be a lot of dust and noise you know i mean if you if you like to sleep in or you know there were even cars going through at like two o'clock in the morning and stuff so um i guess the the biggest pros are if you have america the beautiful pass it's free if not i don't think it's that expensive there is a gate that you pass through that every time we've gone through was closed so we never had to pay uh, i guess certain times of the year it's open and you do have to pay but right now it's free so I think it's because it's so close to Las Vegas, that's why there's so many people here. And of course the boat launches. Um, there's, there's a ton of spots out here, but they're all pretty much full. We had to drive around for quite a while last night to find you know, a halfway decent spot, and we never really found one. So I think it's worth it to uh, drive up to Stewart's Point. It's just so much more beautiful up there, and the drive is just amazing, man. Check out this time lapse. All right, so back at our favorite spot. Uh, we love this campsite. We both really, really love it. So I'm just gonna set up real quick. I think I'm gonna set the table out here and cook some food real quick. I uh, gotta pull everything out, get the chairs out and everything. Ah, it's good to be back. I love this place. This feels like home to me. I love it. All right, so we got the uh, induction oven stove top going on out here, heating up some noodles. We're using the uh, pot to heat up stuff now because it has a lid and it works much better. So I wanna show you guys the light we got uh, later tonight, I will definitely do like a full review on these LED headlights. These are for sealed beam uh, replacements, the, the kind that you can't change the bulb in. That's what came with this fan and they just were terrible. They were absolutely terrible. And we watched like reviews on higher end, you know, fancy ones with xenon bulbs and all this stuff. And they just, they just weren't that great. So the best solution I could come up with was these LED headlights. Uh, and these are awesome. They are so bright and the light uh, temperature is really nice. It's very white and they're, they're, they rock, man. Uh, later tonight when it gets dark, I'll give you guys like, I'll show you how bright they are. And there's a couple different versions. There's some where the whole, all of them light up and then they dim for low beams. But these ones are just uh, like this row and then like one on top or something. Or maybe it's like these three and then one up there for low beam. So it's pretty rad. We put them upside down. A couple of the reviews said to put them upside down. They work better. And uh, it seems like they do. I don't know. I haven't mounted them the right way yet. But they work great. We love them. So for the, uh, and I'll put an Amazon affiliate link in the description. I do make a small commission, but I will never ever tell you uh, I like something or uh, recommend something that I don't like that would not be in my best interest uh, and it's just dishonest and I'm not about that so this company uh, Nightlight sent me this uh, this LED light bar to review even though the LED headlights are very bright very much more than the stock ones there's still not quite enough on country roads where it's just pitch black out and you can't really see anything and especially situations like this like pulling into camp you know, when it's dark and it's uh, kind of rough terrain, you need to be able to see really well. So we wanted to get a LED light bar on the bottom. And then once we get the high top, put one on top too. The one on the bottom is great for like when it's raining or foggy or dusty, when visibility is really low, cause then you don't get that awful glare that you would with one on top. So this one will be great for that. I'm gonna try to install this thing today. I don't know if I have everything. I don't know if I have the right tools. 
Um, but I'm gonna try. I'm gonna get as far as I can. I'd like to at least get this thing mounted today if I can. Hopefully our drill has enough charge, and hopefully it's powerful enough. We'll see. Um, so yeah, they sent me this light bar, and it looks really high quality, and they are very inexpensive. I'm surprised how inexpensive they are on um, on Amazon. So I will put an affiliate link for that in the description too if you want to check it out. Uh, I have not like really used this thing yet. We plugged it in the battery real quick to see how bright it was, and it looked really bright. It looked nice. Um, and the company Nylite also makes wiring harnesses. And by the way, they have a bunch of different models of these. Like they have different sizes and shapes and everything else. So um, you can check them out. They definitely have great deals and have great reviews. Um, they also make wiring harnesses. So I bought this wiring harness. And uh, this one's actually for two lights, but I got it for really cheap and they were sold out of the ones for one light. So this will work. Um, I can cut and crimp the extra line on it. And it's also got a little switch here, which is uh, kind of cool. It's kind of a uh, water resistant switch. It's got a little rubber boot on it. So yeah, I think after I eat a little bit more, um, I'm gonna get all the tools out and see if I can get this thing mounted up. Hopefully I can get it working tonight to show you guys how it works. Okay, so this is gonna be more of a review video and just some little tips and tricks about installing these things. I don't want this a whole how to install a uh, LED light bar, partially because I don't want the liability if somebody starts a fire in their van or something and partially because I just want to get this done. The sun's going to go down sooner than later and I just don't want to do that. So um, if you don't have basic electrical knowledge, I'm not going to be able to teach you enough in a video for you to be able to do it anyway. So one of the cool things about this light is it's mountable in so many different ways. These, let me show you again. These parts slide up and down. You can put them any way you want, depending on what you have to mount them to. And then, this part you can mount this way so that you can pretty much mount it on the front of a bumper and it will be good or you can flip this around and go this way so that you can mount it on top of something and it's very adjustable you can move uh, quite a bit so there's a lot of different ways you can mount this thing which is really cool i'm going to mount it to the bumper the uh, airbag sensor is mounted to the frame back there a little way. It's kind of under the radiator. I had this bumper off not too long ago to paint it black, so I know that. Uh, there, I don't know. It seems like it could be really sketchy to start drilling around an airbag sensor. It could pop off your airbag. You could possibly break a wire and then your airbag sensor doesn't work. And then when you do get in an accident, it's not going to deploy and it might not keep you safe. So do your own research about where your airbag sensor is and be careful in that area definitely do some research there so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get these lined up uh to match just because it'll look better that way and I, I just i'm a perfectionist that way and then i'm gonna mount these on temporarily and set it where i want it and then i'm gonna get in a uh what are these called chalk pens yeah one of these chalk pens that writes on black stuff and i'm gonna trace the outside of this thing and then i'm gonna remove these and then i'm gonna set them where I traced and lined it up, and then I'm gonna mark the hole with, uh, with the chalk pen and start with a very small diameter drill bit and work my way up until I get a hole that's big enough to fit the bolt through uh, this thing to mount this. And luckily there's an, just enough room back here where I can stick an open end to uh, tighten these things down all the way. So that's a good thing. I should be able to get this mounted today. As long as my cheap Harbor Freight drill here holds up enough and as long as my cheap Harbor Freight drill bits are strong enough. So I guess we'll see. Okay, so I got those holes drilled and uh, now I'm just gonna mount these parts and then once these are fully mounted and tightened down, I will uh, mount the light to these. Now luckily this kit came with all the uh, nuts and bolts that you will need. I don't, I don't think I mentioned, uh, I bought the wiring harness separately than the light that was sent to me, but they were both the Nylite brand. I will put them both in the description. I wanted to get the same brand wiring harness to see how this system works as a whole. So I'm gonna tighten these down real quick. It's gonna be a pain and uh, I'm not gonna film it. <laughs> okay, so I got these guys in. This one, uh, I drilled just a little too far back. So this thing's gonna be pointing this way a little bit. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, if it is, I'll just pull this one out and drill a little farther forward. Uh, not the end of the world, but the most important thing is that these are the same this way. They're not like that and they're not like that. You know what I mean? Because you don't want your light going all the way that way or all the way that way. I don't think a little bit's going to make that big of a difference, but um, learn from my mistake. And the other thing is I put some thread locker on the bolt before I put it through. Um, that helps a lot because this thing is going to vibrate all over the place 
and that just sucks. So on the side of this are uh, two holes on each side that you can drop bolts through. So I'm going to use the supplied bolts and put those in now. All right, got this bad boy mounted. That looks sweet. I love it. And uh, because this mount was a little bit farther back, I was able to just kind of like tweak it just a little bit inside of the uh, inside of the adjusters or whatever and uh, crank it down so it looks pretty darn straight now and it looks like they're going straight ahead so that should be good so now i just got to uh get to the wiring so yeah i'm, I'm happy with the way it looks it looks cool i can't wait to see what evie says she's down there uh, filming something right now all right so i've come to realize that i do not have enough daylight to do this and i also need just a couple things i needed extra fitting the ones that came through this are a smaller size than will allow for the uh, post on my fuse panel to uh, hook this thing up to. So I'm gonna have to get that. I've gotta take off the air cleaner and do a couple other things and it's gonna be a total pain to fish the wire through to get to the inside to trigger the relay on the switch. Um, the actual wiring of uh, the ground and the hot wire for the switch won't be very hard at all, but the, um, the getting the wire in there will be and I just don't have enough light. So. I've got this thing temporarily wired up and uh, this is gonna have to suffice for now. You can see it, it works. So um, I'm gonna wait till it gets dark and let's give this light and the LED headlights a uh, little run for their money out here. It's gonna be nice and dark out here. Hopefully the moon won't come out right away and uh, it'll be dark and we can get some good footage and see, uh, compare them. There's, how many lights are in this one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 lights in each one of these. So there's 30 total on the headlights and 40 on this one. So we'll see how this goes in a little bit. Um, I wanna make some more food. I don't know if I'm gonna get the fridge tonight or not. Uh, I can always do it when it's dark. So I might do it in a little bit, but I don't know. I think I can kind of wait. It's got, it's like broken, but it still comes out. You just have to kind of slam it back in, but I don't know, we'll get to eventually. You're always fixing stuff on these things. It's not nearly as bad as an RV though, so yeah. Okay, hopefully you guys can see me okay. The camera is on manual exposure, meaning that as we turn on lights, uh, it's not gonna change the exposure, it's gonna stay exactly the same. So that should give you the best idea of how bright these lights are. So this is not a perfect experiment. I really wish I had the, the stock sealed beam or any other sealed beam halogen headlight or xenon or whatever to compare to these LED headlights because they are a lot better. Uh, the only thing is they don't have a cutoff. So they, they kind of, they're, they're very directional and straight. They don't go out very much, but um, they are definitely a lot brighter. And the other thing is these should last way, way longer than halogen or xenon or whatever. Um, LED technology has advanced so much in the last few years, it's insane. So now you can get like these incredible LED lights for your rig for dirt cheap. I mean like dirt cheap. So go and check out those Amazon affiliate links. Okay, so here is the low beams. Let me give you a little bit of a zoom on this so you can see a little bit more of how far they go. They're pretty bright and notice the really nice color temperature and not too much of a spread off to the sides. They're pretty uh, straight on as far as how the beams go. So let's have her turn on the high beams real quick. High beams. Cool, so there's the high beams. You can see uh, how much more that lights everything up. And I'm gonna zoom in real quick and give you a shot of that. And the high beams actually spread out a little bit more. So it's, it's a little bit nicer. Now I'm gonna leave this uh, zoomed in right here and I'm gonna go manually turn on the LED light bar so you can take a look of what they look like together. Okay, so you can see that's a pretty significant difference. Uh, the addition of the LED light bar makes a pretty big difference both in brightness and, and uh, spread and distance. Uh, I don't know how well you could see out, but um, from far away, there's a car parked way up on the hill up there. You can see uh, their, their license plate and their tail light reflectors light up quite a bit more with that LED bar on. So now I'm gonna have Evie turn off the headlights and we'll see what just the LED bar by itself looks like.
Okay, so complete darkness. Let's turn on this LED bar. Okay, so here's the low beams again, and, uh, or no, this is the high beams, I'm sorry, I have the LED headlights, the, um, the um, sealed LED headlights. So, you can see that the difference between the two, it's, uh, the LED light bar definitely makes a really big difference, and it's really nice. And as I said before, mounted low, that's really good for, uh, you know, low visibility, whether it's rain or dust or snow or fog or anything like that you won't get glare too bad like you will with it mounted up really high. So we are actually going to get a huge one when we get the high top and mount it on the top. So we have just ridiculous lights for back roads. And the, the benefits of that are, one, you can see uh, just on back roads at night, like really well. So you can see wildlife coming and everything. You can find a camp spot and stuff like that. And that, it just makes such a big difference having good lights. We also want to get some LED lights for the back. Um, the, the, another benefit of the LED lights versus halogen is they, not only do they last so much longer, but they don't require as much power to run. So that is a really cool thing. So we're really happy with this setup. Uh, we're gonna go light a fire and uh, I'll give you guys some closing thoughts. Okay, so overall, what do I think of the LED light setup? I love them. I love both of them. I think they are both, uh, necessary and i can't wait to get the third one so because the the shadows from it down low are are can be kind of extreme and when you're going over you know bumpy areas and stuff you're not going to be able to see nearly as well but the ability to see wildlife on the road especially back roads and potential hazards coming up and especially when we get into off-road areas like this the ability whoa the ability to um to see it's like so important so uh, overall i absolutely recommend them um if you're not good or you don't have enough knowledge or you don't feel comfortable installing something like this i think it's definitely a worthwhile endeavor to learn because when you're out if you're going to be out traveling full time it would be extremely helpful to know how to fix basic stuff and if you're going to build a van you need to know how to do electrical stuff and even if you have somebody else do it for you you need to know how to fix it because you might be out in the middle of nowhere like this and have nobody there to help you. Whoa, whoa. And you're gonna have to do it yourself. So I think uh, overall it's win-win. I highly recommend both of these. Um, definitely a good way to go. So I'm gonna leave it with that guys. Thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Love yourself.